What's going on everybody? I've got a, uh, well it's not a tool making video, but it's a tool mild cleanup restoration video. Uh, I happened upon a really amazing older tool. Uh, I don't have one of these in my shop yet, so it was really nice to find a very old one. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys, clean it up, make it all nice and useful, and then mount it to my bench. So. Without further ado, I just can't get, I, I'm excited. Ah, this is a Kagan ring ruler. So it's a horizontal ring stretcher and it has my reducers down here. This is, oh, I would uh, imagine it's probably a 1960s version. Um, it has a serial number on it, but I haven't really uh, look to see whether or not I could track down the serial number. I did contact the company because they are still in business. All US made down in California. Really awesome, awesome stuff. I love these older tools. If I can buy one, restore one, and make it work, great. Um, I did get a hold of them, didn't hear back, but I wanted to say, cool tool. Um, I think that they still sell parts for this. But uh, as it sits right now for me, it still works. It's still, it's perfect. I ended up putting it a, a scrap ring on there and then cranking it and then cracking the ring apart. I wanted to see how, how, uh, how much force it had. Plenty of force, awesome tool. So let's go ahead and get into the teardown of this guy and start looking at some, uh, how to make it look nice again. All right, so this is the fella. So I'm going to start just disassembling it and first before I do that there's some grime and dirt and stuff so I'm going to put on some gloves because I'd rather do this than spend three hours scrubbing my hands afterwards. We're going to go ahead and just start taking this down. So first thing is take our little bottom plate off and you got a threaded little plate here that I can play with. So there's part one, I'll put him aside, we'll clean him up in a minute. And I can remove this, this guy. Got a little bit of, a little bit of play there. We'll see what that's about. So this is our RAM for reducing ring sizes. And I might polish that up too. Seems like something that I would want polished and see what it looks like. Yeah, that face, I think I had polished that face, especially I'm going to be pressing down on, on rings. So this some fun grime still in there. Put that aside. Now, next thing we want to do is take this piece apart. Um, we're going to do that by first removing one of these nuts. The cool thing about this tool is that this nut thread and this thread on this other side are the same. So if I wanted to, I could change the side of the stretcher. This guy should just pull out and there's my kind of coil. It's got a, looks like I need to maybe remake, remake a spring here and we can do that. I can do that here. Um, a little bit, a little bit loose. But yeah, that's okay. Everything else is looking fine. That spring's a little, a little loose here. So we're gonna remake that in a few minutes. This piece twirls out, it's threaded in. And what happens is your mandrel here presses in and stretches these splines out to then stretch your ring. So this needs to be all cleaned up. Put that aside. Now for this top plate, it's being held on by two nuts and then four Allen screws. So I have an Allen wrench I'm going to open this up with. There's one. Let's turn this guy over and we'll put our screws in there.
A lot of greasiness. There it goes. So there's our plate or casting. And then we have our casting here. So this piece may come just right out. Is it spring? It's attached with spring. So I'm not going to worry too much about removing the springs and gunk and slime. And I am going to remove some of this schmoo. Um, that looks like chocolate syrup. I'm going to remove some of it. This is why I wear gloves, everybody. This is why I wear gloves. <laughs> it doesn't need this much. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get new gloves. Sweet mother baby. The way this works is uh, my cam moves everything forward and back. And I'm going to go ahead and just start cleaning out some of this sh schmoo. Uh, let's get a paper towel. Probably don't need this much. There we go. Scrape some of this off. Now this isn't bad having this grease in here. It just it's a little little lot of it. I'm gonna want to make sure some of it stays because that's gonna help lubricate the entire mechanism. Just want to kind of disperse it a little bit. So, oh, where am I at now? Let's grab our little tool. Wherever I put it, probably threw it away. Where's my dental tool? There it is. All sorts of fun junk in there. I'm not even going to worry about taking any of this apart because it's functional. But I want to... I'm going to clean some of this up. Does it pop out? part does so I am gonna clean some of that schmoo out and then see this guy's attached with the spring down here I'm not gonna worry about that kind of stuff I don't see any metal shavings which is nice that means this whole action is working like it should what I am going to do is take uh, a little bit of white lithium grease and use that as kind of my lubricant for inside of here. So let me grab some of that. like I want it so before I put that plate back on I'm going to uh, remove some of this old grease too and replace it with some lithium I like the white lithium it's got a holds up really well and it's uh, a lot cleaner than some of this older older schmoo and I'm not worrying about taking all the old stuff out. 
Um, I am going to take some of the big chunks out. And I don't see any rust on the inside, <laughs> probably because of all the, the grease, but I'm going to make sure the inside's nice and nice and clean, nice and uh, coated. I want to try and promote longevity for this tool. And then now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and leave it off for now. And then what I'm going to do is change my gloves again, because schmoo. Now the next thing I want to do is start working with my mandrel here, the expanding mandrel. I noticed that this was really loose as it was in here, so it was wiggling around. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to clean this off pretty thoroughly with some of my favorite lubricant and cleaner. It's a, uh, this stuff, CRC Multipurpose Lubricant and Corrosion Inhibitor. I use this stuff on my rolling mill all the time. Keeps rust from forming, and I'm just gonna clean up this mandrel, get some of that extra grease off for now. This is gonna keep this nice and lubricated. And when I get done, once I get done cleaning this and the old stuff off, I'm going to put some white lithium grease on it. And before I throw it back in the, uh, the other one. So what I'm doing here is threading it on, but I'm going to actually add a little bit of thread locker or uh, Loctite to those threads so that they stay nice and snug. You find some here. Okay, so just this stuff. Loctite, thread locker, I'll put some of that on here, I'm just going to screw this in, and I'm actually going to take this entire piece out, I'm going to stick a rod in there, tighten it down a little bit more, and see if I can snug that up nice. If I have a rod large enough. If I don't have a rod, I can use a drill bit. Let's go ahead and find something that would fit in there. Okay, I just have a drill bit that I placed through there, and I plan on just snugging it down. Then I can put it back. That Loctite should keep this nice and stable. But first, let me make sure I'm good. I'm gonna put a little bit more white lithium grease on this guy. And then I'm going to put our back plate back on. Now when I do that, I'm also going to add Loctite to those threads of the uh, set screws that are on here. And I need to clean those off because they are covered in grease. The Loctite's going to kind of keep everything in place. Shouldn't have a whole lot of vibration with a tool like this, but if I'm going to put it to get together, and I'm going to do it right, make sure it's cleaned up, purdy, and then I have a little bit of rust that I want to get off this thing. Okay, next thing we really want to do is check out our uh, our mandrel here, our expanding mandrel with the four splines. It's in great condition, except for this spring here. The spring is what I want to fix. And I'm going to fix that by making a jump ring, a very large jump ring out of uh, music wire. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a drill bit. This one happens to be 
7.79 millimeters in diameter and I'll tell you why that's important here in a second. I'm going to put it in the vise. Uh, I have it in the vise with my copper jaws so that it protects the drill bit. I'm not ruining the drill bit. I'm just using this as a mandrel. And the reason why I chose that size is because it's slightly smaller than the spring size of the mandrel I need which is uh, about 10, 10 point, yeah, about 10 millimeters, 9, 10 millimeters. So this being 7, or excuse me, 9, 8 something, it's slightly smaller. So when I wrap this with the uh, music wire, it's going to have some spring back when I take it off. So I want this to be just about, uh, I don't know, a couple millimeters smaller than what I need. So we'll see if this works the first time. If not, we'll do it again. So I have music wire. This is what they use to make springs. Go ahead and cut piece off here. And then I'm going to use some jaws here to, and I need to tighten that more. Make sure it's on there nice and tight. And then I'm gonna basically make a jump ring. Bring back. I'm gonna see if this works out first. Not, I need to go to a smaller drill bit. Let's see what this measures at. That may work. Let's see what our internal diameter is. nine to four so that may work we're going to go ahead and lop off a piece of this and see whether or not we can get it on there but this portion is hard so i may try and do this off camera essentially i'm going to want to coil it on the best i can all right <laughs> so that was a little bit of a pain in the us. Here's the new spring I put on here. Let me see if I can zoom in without getting grease on my camera. So there's the new spring. We find the old one here real fast. This old one was very, very small in diameter and opened up. It may have been a, a homemade one at one point in time. This new one's a lot thicker. It lasts a lot longer. And then I had to uh, size it just right. So probably could be a smaller diameter wire, but that's the music wire I had on hand. That'll work just fine. Don't need to worry about anything anything being uh, replaced right away. If I need to, I can buy smaller music wire, make a right size spring, but this will work just fine. So the way this spline system is set up, it's inserted over the mandrel, and then it locks in with four pegs. Those four pegs just align those splines. and. That's nice and nice and smooth. Then we have our retaining nut. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of Loctite on that too. Not much, just a little bit to kind of keep it snug. That way all I need to do is really hand tighten this. Function test, working like it should. Good, we can put our back cap on. Same thing, I'm gonna put a little Loctite on those threads. And I'm looking and it does not appear that the, uh, the mandrel can be switched from side to side. It doesn't have the locating pins, which that's okay. I just presumed that that might be something they had designed into it. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and hand tighten that. And we are on to kind of some basic outside cleanup now. So I'll move this aside first. I'm gonna bring this guy up, our plate. I'm gonna spray him off with some 
stuff. And I'm going to clean some of that nasty schmoo off of it. Put him aside. Now we're going to want to do some basic cleanup to the body. Uh, to do that, I'm going to put this away for a moment. I'm going to grab some of this super foam wear clean that uh, dissolves grime and stuff, foams. I'll put a little bit on the outside. I'll let it sit for a few minutes. And then I'm going to give it just a, a good rub down with brass brush. Those guys cleaned out. Okay. I'm going to get this pretty much dried out. Now that I've introduced one thing to this mix, I'm going to go ahead and move my tools out of the way. I'm going to replace the plastic and then work on my final finishing uh, of the tool and that's going to be uh, a little bit of scraping and uh, some final lubrication so we'll go ahead and remove this plastic all the junk that goes along with it can't believe how smooth that is now Grab some more plastic and some more gloves. All right, so here we are. We got our uh, little piece here. And I've got some rust I wanna try and get off. So one trick uh, I use is uses a piece of uh, firearms brass and I'll hammer it flat. This one I just chased to be kind of a fun handle. File it flat or hammer it flat, file the top flat and then take a round screwdriver and burnish over the top. When you burnish over the top, it creates a little burr. And that burr is harder, since it's brass, it's harder than rust, but softer than steel. And if I see any chunks and stuff, I want big chunks I want to get off, I can use this piece of brass to kind of do some scraping without ruining the, the metal. Now it has an old kind of powder coating or, or paint on it and I don't want to take all that off. But I do want to use the brass to kind of clean up, scrape any grooves that I see. And then what I'm going to end up doing is just giving it a good old spray with my favorite lube. This guy. So the CRC uh, multi-purpose lubricant and corrosion inhibitor, I'm going to give it a coat. I'm going to spray it just a little bit down and then I'm going to rub it in. Okay, that is nice and clean. And the last thing I'm gonna do for the outside finish is just use a little bit of paste wax. 
it'll keep the moisture off the metal and it'll give it a nice looking uh, kind of dull sheen. Everybody wants their tools to look nice, right? My tools out of the way again. And bring this guy home. So I plan on having him sit kind of like right here. All right, so this guy's gonna sit right here, right on the side of the bench pointed inward so I'm gonna go ahead and mark out the holes where I want it and then I will drill him in place probably won't do that on camera but what I will do on camera is let's put this guy back on take and polish up the bottom part of our ram so I'm gonna do that with some sandpaper and a flat plate all right the last thing we're gonna do is polish the bottom of this little ram. And that little ram goes into the bottom portion of here that reduces the rings. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off by using some 600 grit sandpaper. And I'm going to use a little bit of that lubricant and corrosion inhibitor on my sandpaper. And then I'm just gonna figure eights. Take a look. nice so far it's got some tool marks in there I kind of want to get out so I'm gonna push and rotate see if I can get a little harder in there. Next grit, fifteen hundred. Okay. Last one is going to be our 2000. That looks nice. And I'm gonna take it over to the buffer and give it a buff and I'll come back. Now that is a polish. Let's see if I can get a me in there. Hmm. Hmm. Where am I? Take it out. Okay, we'll screw this in. And we have ourselves a finished tool. There you go. A Kagan Perfect Ring Roller mild restore this guy is going to be a lot of fun to have in the shop and uh just like everything else i love having old tools in the shop so uh having having this guy has been a been a pleasure i uh if anyone wanted to know i did find him on ebay it was really really inexpensive and uh well worth the inexpensive price for such an amazing old antique tool that still extremely relevant so 
If you guys haven't already, check out Lime Punch Forge down below. Uh, hit that little red subscribe button and uh, give me some love. Talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching and uh, be amazing.